You're listening to Pathlight Radio. Hi, everyone. You're listening to Pathlight People. On today's show, we're going to be speaking to a very special guest from upstate New York. His name is Dominic Cox. Dominic is a solo artist, a speaker, a business developer, and the founder of the musical group Driven Eleven. Today, we spoke to Dominic about faith, family, and what's coming up next for his band Driven Eleven. Please welcome to Pathlight People, Dominic Cox. Hey, thanks for having me, David. It's good to be here. Well, kind of there. I mean, here in New York, you're in Australia, but pretty awesome we're together. Oh, yeah, it's fantastic. For, for those listeners that haven't heard of you before or don't, haven't heard Driven Eleven, why don't you tell us a little bit about your, your story? Oh, yeah, sure. Well, well, Driven Eleven, music is just one piece of it. The mission of Driven Eleven is to inspire faith in action. We want people to know that they are here to capture those everyday moments. The music is a great way to connect with people and to, um, to share the love of Christ in a way that's, you know, it's unique and fun, but... At the end of the day, we want people to realize that the Great Commission happens in those everyday moments. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're at work, at school, school uh, with your family. It's what we do every day where Christ really shines. And that's what Driven Eleven's all about. Um, music just happens to be the, fun, the, more, the more fun part of all of it. <laughs> yeah, that's fantastic. So, so when did Driven Eleven start? Uh, well, I've been doing music, I mean, since I was a kid. Driven Eleven um, became official probably... I want to say three and a half, four years ago. Before that, um, I was with a worship band called um, Driven Worship. Um, but when I moved down to Nashville and was, you know, called to do some of this stuff, uh, I say called. I mean, it's always an interesting thing when people say that. Well, the Lord called me. Uh, <laughs> um, it just seemed like the right thing to do, um, and we've seen some really great blessings through it, and seen some really seen God move in a lot of different areas. Um, but I became a soul artist when I went down to Nashville, Tennessee, and was just trying to really figure out what I was doing with music and what I was doing with the ministry. And I thought at first it was going to be, oh, we're going to encourage people with music. And, and as I started to write more and started to learn more and get more involved in the ministry, I realized it was much more than that. It was, it was more about actually impacting people's lives um, in the everyday moments that I was at and also at different concerts. And you would see it after a concert, people would come up and say something effective, like this one song changed my life. And now I'm going to put myself in drug rehabilitation. I'm like, I'm scratching my head going, it was, it was just a song. Wow. Really? And I, and I didn't realize the impact it would have on people. Um, and then as it started to go even further, you know, people were asking for coaching or counseling or different things that I happened to have a background in. So we started to do some more of that. So a lot of times when we're traveling, there might be one or two days that I'm doing a concert, but then another day or two of it might be, working with a small business to help them get back on their feet or a church that might be struggling with an area and helping them through that. So it's been really an interesting journey when you thought it was one thing and God said, nope, that's just the way to connect with people. You're going to be doing this instead. Yeah, well, that's incredible. And it sounds like as well as obviously the music side of it, there is a real um, ministry off stage as, as well as on the stage as well. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Matter of fact, the, uh, we always, whenever we get all volunteers together, and because you're going to need volunteers to do a Christian concert, that's just how it goes. <laughs> and <laughs> so we are very thankful when you show up. We really appreciate it. Um, but we always say the concert's the easy part. It's really that hour before and that hour afterwards mm. that we really want to focus focus on more than anything else, and that's connecting with people, engaging with people, um, because that's what matters. It's those relationships. It's the music is fun, but it's the relationships that matter. Yeah, that's fantastic. And you mentioned before, Dominic, that uh, when we were chatting before we uh, started recording, that you uh, you had a bit of a, a military background, and, and God's obviously used that now to help your ministry. Well, yeah, um, I had about five years in the Navy, just shy of five years. Um, had some really neat tours. Got to work in D.C. Got to go down to South America and do some. Um, some missions down there with other countries. Got to see a lot down in South America um, that really made me appreciate the blessings that I have here in the U.S. and even a lot of other um, first world countries, so to speak. I mean, it was amazing. So several years later, you know, when here I am doing Driven 11, and I was asked to join up with an organization called Food for the Hungry that was going to be helping children in Central America and South America. It was it was one of those things like, yeah, I know exactly what they're dealing with. I, I, I understand that relationship. So it was a really easy transition to say, yes, I would love to help out and be a part of that. But 
on top of that, there's also been other times where like we have a concert coming up for military and law enforcement. I get to lead phrase, which I'm just, I'm blessed to be able to do that. But then I also get to connect with these, these men and women that are in the military and say, yes, God can use you in those moments too. So it's been really interesting for sure. Yeah. And I think connecting with them on a musical level and a spiritual level would be a huge blessing for yourself because I think having that common ground of the military background, but also, you know, saying to them, you know, I've, you know, I know what you guys go through with, with day-to-day stuff, but at the same time, you know, I can show you how God helped me through that and, and how he's helping me now. Oh yeah. There's, there's no way you're getting through a tour away from your family without having some kind of grounding in, in faith. At, at least that's what it was for me. Yeah. Fantastic. So as well as, so with the the work that you're doing, obviously off stage with the um, foundations and stuff like that, do you, does that take up quite a bit of your your year, or is it mainly just writing and touring with Driven Eleven? You know what? There's oh man, I think what you're asking is <laughs> what else do I do? Because <laughs> 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 I mean, it does take up a lot of time. I mean that that's for sure. I know last year I did close to I don't know the exact number, but close to about a hundred events. Um, but I mean, I still have to put food on the table, so I mean, sure. I have a full time job as well. Um, and I do that, which is, you know, business development, helping out. Um, but you know what, as busy as it is, I would say I can do all those things because I have a pretty solid foundation at home. I have a wife that supports everything that we do. Matter of fact, um, I've been married close to 18 years this year. Wow. Congratulations. Oh, I'm, yeah, I don't even know what's up with that. She apparently likes me. (laughs) So. So, yeah, I do not deserve that woman. She's amazing. And since we've been married, we've moved on average every two years. And I don't know very many women who would do that for their husband, but she does. And um, if I didn't have that backing, I know, you know, it'd be much harder to do the traveling or to have someone that's taking care of our family while I'm away. And I just try to make sure that when I am home, that I am home and I'm present as much as possible. not perfect at it, but I do the best of what I've got. Sure. And I think obviously having that, that time with your family is, is really important and um, sometimes I know for myself it's easy to get caught up in the ministry side of things but then I think sometimes God wants us just to be able to switch off and, and spend time with our loved ones. Oh yeah, learning how to turn off is, is important but the thing is you're not even turning off too. It's when you're, when you're done on the road then it's time to minister to your family and be present and sometimes that's just being present sometimes that means just playing a board game and that's okay yeah that's fine or yeah having having a meal together and you know having a board game or watching a you know watching some tv or whatever it may be i think it's that family time is just it really is priceless mm-hmm. so that's so that's fantastic. And, and I think having that support from your family is a huge thing in ministry. I know for myself, um, Pathlight Radio wouldn't have happened without the support of my wife and my family. And I think it's a real blessing to have that support from our families to be able to serve the Lord. Oh, yeah. Driven 11 would not be here without my missus. <laughs> so, uh, so obviously, I mentioned to you earlier, we've been playing uh you know, quite a few of Driven Eleven songs, and we're really loving the music coming out. So, what, what sort of uh, what's what's coming up in 2018 for Driven Eleven? Oh boy, you know. Um, so we have the first album, which was Light of the Future, and last album that came out or the beginning of 2017 was Left Field. Um, I was excited about that project, and we're going to be promoting that here. Um, the songs that were on that, um, but for this year, um, I'm actually doing songs that are more about the family to some degree. Uh, I've got a song for my wife that I wrote, which generally speaking, she doesn't like when I write her songs, but this <laughs> one she actually dug a little bit. So that was good. Uh, um, the songs that we're focusing on really are going to be about getting away from what the world would have us think we're supposed to be. Yeah. I find that a, a lot of us is even in our twenties or in our, even thirties and teenagers, a lot of them think they have to have this view of who they are on social media, which I don't know if anyone realizes it or not, but 95% of the stuff you see on social media is just what they, what, what people want you to see. Smoke and but mirrors. that, <laughs> and, but that image that we put up makes other people want to do the same thing. And it's this self appealing cycle thing that's going on. So a lot of the music that I'm working on right 
right now is really about knowing who you are and that the idols that God wants you to be, or sorry, the idols that the world wants you to be and you think you're supposed to be, what God thinks of you so so much more than that piece Mm -hmm. and that addiction to the image that we believe we're supposed to have is not even close to what God sees us as being. So we don't have to chase that anymore. So a lot of the music that I've been working on and writing on is it's got a major focus on not getting away from social media. It has a place, but rather understanding that social media is the most unsocial thing in the world. And you have a God who loves you just the way you are. Oh, that's fantastic. And it it really is a huge issue. I think not just um, in, in the States, but I think in Australia as well, we have, people that are spending hours and hours and hours each day on social media. And, you know, I remember someone saying, I I saw a quote somewhere and it said, you know, the people that have the best lives are the ones you don't hear about on social media or something along those lines. And it it was basically saying that, you know, people that are out there living life to the fullest aren't documenting it on social media because they're too busy having fun. (laughs) Yeah, They're, they're too busy enjoying what God created. And once again, it's not to say that those the technology isn't good, but no. you can find uh, they've done the studies and they've even said people that are constantly on there trying to pursue what they think they're supposed to be doing don't have any close friends. They don't. Mm. They really couldn't name someone as a close friend, and it's hard to when you have five thousand followers. Oh, <laughs> well, that's right. I mean, you know, a lot of people I know who don't use social media have got loads and loads of friends, but I think it becomes like a like a measuring tool of you know if i have 5000 friends on social media then it means that i'm popular you know but um or if i have 10 friends on social media and it means i'm not popular but you shouldn't measure your state of mind and how you're feeling and stuff like that by what social media tells you is right and wrong or what's hot and not or whatever um and i think more and more, I mean, we use social media all the time being a digital radio station and I think it's a fantastic, um, you know, tool for reaching out and connecting with people. Like, if it wasn't for social media, we would have never connected, um, which, you know, so I yep. think there's definitely some great positives to come out of it, but I think um, that we should be trying to spend more time with God than worrying about, um, yeah, how many likes we get on on social media. <laughs> You know, and the, at the end of the day, too, it's still it's nothing new. It really isn't. I mean, even when TV came out and you had all the imagery, you had the you had the same problems, just packaged a little bit differently. And I mean, even before that, I mean, you, it was the people in the town that you were trying to be like, oh, keeping up with the Joneses thing. Yeah. It's just this constant need to feel like we have to be something that we're not, because we have a God who gave everything for us. And I'm sorry, that badge, that label. I think Lecrae said it best. He's like, there's you can have one T-shirt that says no name store and you can have another t- t-shirt that says Armani or something like that. And it has so much value just because what it's stamped with mm-hmm. and we are stamped with the name of Jesus. And that gives you more worth than anything this world could ever say. Oh, amen. And no, I think the perception that someone is better than someone because of the clothes they're wearing or the shoes they're wearing or how much, you know, ice they're wearing or anything like that. I think, you know, that's that's a really sort of negative message to be teaching, you know, especially younger people. But I think, um, yeah, it, it, the the Bible verse that, you know, God, man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. I think that's the most important thing that we should be worrying about. Mm-hmm. Amen. Oh, boy. All serious now. <laughs> we got all serious. Whoa, what's going on? Radio program here. Yep. And it, and it is tough because the word of God is offensive, mm. you know, and when you share, when you share scripture, there will be people that are offended, mm. but you know, if, if you actually love someone, you'll be willing to have them be offended to save their life. Yeah, definitely. That's right. It's, it's definitely a lot more, uh, yeah, I'd rather politely offend someone, um, than not tell them about Jesus at all. Yep. And then, of course, there's that other part. You know, we've made our own mistakes. And, you know, the more we share the gospel, the more it puts light under our lives and our failures, which makes it harder to share the gospel. But at the same time, that's where God shines through and says, no, use those mistakes to say, even through these things, God still loves me and he can love you, too. It's amazing how our failures are actually our strengths when it comes to sharing the love of Christ. Yeah, definitely. 
And that's why I like to tell people, I say, I'm not perfect, but as a Christian, I'm under construction. So God's doing that, that work in me. Yep. What I've tried to find too, and it took me a while to do it because I had a pastor who said, listen, share your testimony. I never really thought that I had one. <laughs> um, but when you share those things that you're actually broken in, that's a hard thing to do. Sure. But I've noticed that when I do that, that's when I see the biggest change in others is when they can have that relating moment. I mean, we even talked about the military before. When you can relate with other people in the military, they hear more of what the gospel, their, their heart is softened towards the gospel message. So when we share the things we struggle with, as much as we may be embarrassed, it's a tool to be able to serve the kingdom, but it's going to be a struggle. It's going to be hard, but that's, that's what it takes. Yeah, definitely. Uh, that's, that's a really good point. And yeah, I think it's, it's, it's always a, a, a roller coaster of a ride, but it's, it's definitely worth it in the end. Amen. <laughs> so when, when can we uh, get a copy of your, your next album? The next album, you know what? They always say that if you don't write down your goals and you don't set a timeline and do all that stuff, it'll never accomplish. But I don't have a goal. <laughs> I don't have it written down. Um, I'll admit, right now, more than the music, I'm focusing on some of the um, small business development piece, mm -hmm. um, helping uh, organizations get back on their feet with how do you lead in a biblical perspective? How do you um, how do you delegate in a biblical way? How do you um, use the resources that you have to be a blessing to other ministries? How do you grow all of that? And that's been a big focus. I would like to say that the next uh, singles that are going to come out will be at the end of 2018, mm -hmm. probably in November. Okay. Um, that's my hope. Um, and now I have to write it down. And that's just that's how, how you get goals done. Unless you write it down, it doesn't happen. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So, yeah, probably November is probably we're going to start a few come out. Probably going to have the, as much as my wife doesn't want me to do it, probably going to put out that song that I wrote for her. It's a, it's a funny song. Very similar to like Johnny Diaz is our Diaz. Um, nine fancy pillows. It's kind of like a quirky little song like that. But then I have uh, the addiction to an image song that I'm pretty excited about. I think everyone's going to like it. Yeah, that'd be great. And I'm sure you could come up with some pretty interesting stuff if you did a music video for that particular song as well. Oh yeah. Hey, and it's just so you know, it's a long standing thing. If people want to take songs and make a music video, if we like it, Hey, we'll post it and make it a permanent driven 11. So there's a challenge of anyone listening out there. There you go. To all the Pathlight listeners, you have been challenged. <laughs> Is there any chance that we might be able to uh, see any Driven 11 shows in Australia sometime in the future? I always tell people if I'm invited, I'll go. So haven't been invited to Australia except for the radio station, but you never know what the, the future holds. But hey, I'll go. I'll go where I'm called. I've been to Nicaragua twice with Food for the Hungry and um, got to play some music for some kids down there. Um, been all over the U.S. and I am totally open for traveling. Oh, excellent. Have you ever been to Australia before? Man, it is one of my bucket list items. I have not been to Australia. All of my travels have been from Argentina, Brazil, um, Peru, um, Colombia, anything in South, anything in the Americas I've pretty much been to, yep. um, short of Alaska. And uh, I would, I'd really like to start going east and west and get a little jet lag. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, well, we would, we would love to have Driven 11 in Australia one day. So we'll, we'll pray about that and... Hopefully, uh, if, if anything comes up to our listeners, I'll make sure that we, uh, we let all our listeners know and they can come check out um, Driven 11 live in Australia and uh, that would be fantastic to see sometime in the future. Well, thank you so much for your time, Dominic. It's a, it's a huge blessing to have you on Pathlight Radio and it's, uh, it's great that we can play your music and, and share the gospel through it. And if anyone would like to um, find out more about your ministry and your music, where can they go? Oh, absolutely. You can go to driven11.com. Uh, we're on Facebook. We're, we're everywhere. And there's links to all the music. Um, radio stations like yours are listed on there. Um, but everything's at driven11.com. You can download on iTunes, YouTube, whatever, you, however you consume it, go find it. It's out there. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for your time, Dominic. And uh, we look forward to catching up again later on in the year and, and seeing how things are going then. I appreciate it, David. You have a great one. Yeah, you too. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Pathlight People. Pathlight People is a weekly show featured on Pathlight Radio Australia. Pathlight Radio Australia is a Christian digital radio station broadcasting from Sydney, Australia. 
If you'd like to listen to Pathlight Radio Australia, simply go to your app store on your phone or tablet and just search Pathlight Radio Australia and download the free Pathlight Radio app. If you enjoyed this interview and you would like to share it with someone, you can download this episode and many other episodes on our Pathlight People podcast channel, which is available now on iTunes and Podbean. If you want to keep up to date with what's happening on Pathlight Radio Australia, you can follow and like us on our social media pages. Just search Pathlight Radio Australia on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and YouTube. If you have any questions about something that you heard in today's interview or you have a question about God, Christianity or maybe the Bible, then please email your question to us. Contact at pathflightradio.org For any other information about our radio ministry, just go to our website, pathflightradio.org I'm Dave Daniels and thanks for listening to Pathlight People.